Stoicism is the philosophy embraced by the most successful athletes and entrepreneurs in the world. It teaches self-control and courage in pain and adversity. And if you are an achiever, chances are that you will find challenges, pain and adversities in the process of achieving. Look, anything worth value takes efforts and time and is met with challenges. So why not having a tool that actually helps us in that process? Stoicism is the tool. Despite being a philosophy that is actually over 2000 years old, it has never been more contemporary than today, where we all strive to achieve more and we, we are bombarded by information from all over the place. It teaches us how to control our emotions and how to be fulfilled in the process of achieving anything and actually in the process of living our life. One of the most famous podcasters in the world, Tim Ferriss, refers to Stoicism as a philosophy designed to produce real world effects without the nonsense. Listen, how often do negative emotions like anger and frustration get in our way? And what do they cost us? On the other hand, how do we feel when we actually achieve our goals? Is, isn't that feeling incredible? But let me ask you, how long that, does that feeling last? Is it one day, one week, a month? Depending on how big your achievement was, it might, it might last longer, but it is definitely not a lifetime, right? The truth is that life is lived in the present. Life is lived in the process of achieving anything we do. The natural question that comes to my mind is, how do we feel in the process of achieving? Are we happy in the process of achieving? Are we working on the goals that are actually fulfilling us right now, right here, in the present moment? And how do we react to challenging situations? Do we get angry? Do we get frustrated? Do we explode and lose our control? Marcus Aurelius, one of the famous Stoic, was saying, you can live life right now. Isn't true that uh, all of the people who are achievers, they are very future focused? In order to achieve something, you have to plan, you have to think for the future, you want to have a better future. So the tendency is to be future focused. Now there is a problem with that. And the problem is that life is lived in the present. There is no issue with planning and being future focused. The issue comes when to achieve, we make our life miserable because the present becomes too hard. The question I have is how many people are actually fulfilled and happy right here, right now, versus how many people think they will be fulfilled and happy when they receive the pay rise, when they buy this toy or that other toy, when they achieve this or that goal. That's not happiness, that's not fulfillment. That doesn't last long. That's one day, one week, one month at best. How many people actually keep on buying products and things just to have that, that feeling of happiness, that feeling of fulfillment? What if we actually could be fulfilled and happy in the process of achieving challenging goals? No matter what would face us, we could be still and focused on the target without being affected by external situations, isn't the only thing we can control actually how we react to things? Can you control like your well-being? You can influence it, but you cannot control it really. Can you control how somebody else reacts to what you do or what you ask them to do? Can you control your destiny? The only thing we have control on is our own thinking. Look, I am considered a serial achiever from all of the people who know me, my friends, my colleagues, my family. Anything I put my mind into, I achieve. I'm not particularly talented in anything. I'm just willing more than anybody else to stay the course and to work hard to get 
from where I am to where I wanna be. In the years, because of my tendency of achieving at any cost, I've learned that there are destructive and constructive ways of achieving. There are unfulfilling and fulfilling ways of getting to where you wanna go. And because I have realized, hey, you live life in the present, you better enjoy the process of getting things done, enjoy the process of getting from A to B, because that little process in between is actually your life. I have developed tools that help me with being fulfilled in anything I do. But before getting into the specific of those tools, let me tell you a little story. A couple of years ago, I was playing basketball and it was my birthday and we had a game. I invited the entire team to actually join me after the game at one condition, if we would have won the game. So we are five minutes into the game and uh, this referee is killing us. He's calling everything wrong and everything against us. Like my teammates are collecting fouls. I've got already a traveling violation without doing any traveling. It's just terrible. We are losing and I'm, I'm starting to feel the pressure rising. I'm starting to feel the anger going up. I'm starting to lose control. So I'm, I'm driving now down the lane, I have the ball, I turn around, I get fouled twice, I got hit in my arm, I got hit in my, I don't remember, body somewhere, and the referee blows the whistle. And I'm like, okay, oh, finally, I've got a foul. I'm going to the foul line, I'm going to get free throws. I turn around and the guy does, which means traveling violation. <laughs> and I just lose it. I lose it in that moment. It was not even five minutes into the game. So I run toward him and I yell at him. I was like this close to him and I yell at him, let us play, let us play. And I keep on repeating this thing, but really shouting at him. He was a little smaller than me. I'm not big, but he was smaller. And uh, I think he got scared because I was out of control and very aggressive with my you know, body language. And he called two technicals in a row. In basket, uh, I think if I'm not wrong, you cannot call two technicals in a row. As a referee, you should call one, give me the time to relax, and then if I still decide not to relax, then you call a second technical, and with two technicals, you get ejected immediately. And in basketball, when you get ejected, you don't just get ejected of the game, meaning you cannot play anymore, you actually have to get out of the gym. You are not allowed to stay on the sidelines. You are not allowed to sit where the crowd is sitting. You have to get out of the gym. So here I am basically on my birthday, having to get out of the gym, leaving my team alone, dealing with the challenge and angry and like never before. In those days, I was training extremely hard. I had put into my mind, I will achieve basketball excellence. And I had a plan and I knew what I needed to do to achieve basketball excellence. Remember, I am not the most talented person by any means. So I needed to work harder than the others to perform better than the others and achieve my goals. I was waking up at 5 a.m. in the morning, 5.30 I was at the gym, two hours extremely hard strength training, then 40 minutes by bike to work, and then 40 minutes back after eight hours of work, and then skills training either with my team or alone at the, at the gym. I was training six days a week with one day off. All of these to achieve my goals. So now imagine I'm there sitting, watching my team, not being able to help them. After I put all of these efforts, I'm like, this makes no sense. And in that moment, in that real moment of extreme pain, I was like, this will never happen again. It, it's impossible that I work so hard and then because of my anger, my frustration, my emotion taking the best, the best of me, I am not able to play the game right now. So believe it or not, in two, three years that I still played after this event, I got, I think, only one technical foul in the three coming seasons. I was actually the one who was helping my 
uh, teammates not getting technical fouls. Anything that happens in a team sport is nothing else than a reflection of life. So when I speak about basketball, I'm really speaking about life in general because these lessons, you can apply them in business, family, friends, everyone in life. If you lose control on the basketball field, you have consequences the same way you have them in business and or in other personal situations. One of the things that has helped me really mastering stillness and control in tough situation, it has been my daily routine, my morning routine. Every morning I wake up one hour before the rest of the family and I use that time for myself. It is journaling time, meditation time, reading time. Every single day I read one quote from the book The Daily Stoic from Ryan Holiday. I'm in no way connected to Ryan Holiday and I don't get a kickback for promoting his book or anything like that. Uh, anyways, I'm at the beginning. Very few people will watch this video anyway. Um, the book is just amazing. The author is just amazing. Ryan Holiday has made very, very, very good books. This is not the only one, but specifically how this book is built, it's one stoic meditation a day. So every day you have a quote from Marcus Aurelius or Epictetus or Seneca uh, that makes you think about how to think and to behave in life. So it is an amazing tool for me that has guided me throughout the years. As you can see here, there are notes everywhere. This is now obviously uh, February and so forth and so on. And what I will do, I will record a video every day, two to three minutes, not more. It has to be quick. And uh, I will share the quote that I'm reading and my commentary on it. Hey, if growing and achieving is what drives you, you probably know by now that the right habits are what really make the difference. So if you want to create an unfair advantage by acquiring mental tools that will help you live a successful, fulfilling and virtuous life, reaching growth and achievements, consider subscribing to the channel and following those videos every day. Learn from the Stoics but also apply their knowledge. Knowledge without action is nothing. Next week, I am going to post a recap of January and February. Obviously, we are entering March now, as well as the daily uploads for March, so that we are all catched up into the first two months of the year. Every day I'll do my best to share the ancient wisdom of the Stoics as well as, you know, spicing it up with a little bit of my own life experience, commentaries about past experiences in my life or connections I may, I usually tend to make as I read their quotes, as I read their learnings. So subscribe and activate notifications. I'm really looking forward to start this journey together. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a huge growth experience for myself and hopefully for the people who are, you know, going to watch. Have a good one and I'll see you when I see you.